Right, a very common exam question when it comes to market structures is to evaluate whether monopoly is always bad and to evaluate whether perfect competition is always good. So, this is a very basic exam structure to help you uh, actually form an essay plan for a question like this. The way to start is by looking at the diagram. Now, I've started off by just drawing a very simple monopoly diagram. Um, you've got the quantity that monopolist would produce out there at the profit maximizing point, and you've got the price that the monopolist will set at PM. What I've also done, just for comparison purposes, is to put on here the theoretical place where a perfectly competitive firm would produce and price as well. And that is at the allocatively efficient point. Remember, in the long run, perfectly competitive firms, their conduct is defined by allocative efficiency. And that's where that point is, the green QC and PC. And if you compare, it's pretty obvious to see that monopolist charges a higher price and produces at a lower level of quantity, restricting choice, exploiting consumers. Well, we can show just how much consumers are exploited by shading in this red triangle of consumer surplus loss. Okay, the way we know that, if you start at PC and QC, all right, well, what's the area of consumer surplus? It's the area above the price, but below the demand curve. Well, now suddenly moving to PM, just isolating consumer surplus, that red area has been completely lost. It's a deadweight loss, it's not recovered at all. So when we're looking at the effect on the consumer, that red triangle is a great way to illustrate that the consumers are massively exploited. Okay, so this diagram is very useful. It's called the deadweight loss diagram. So anytime you're trying to show the negative effects of monopoly or the positive effects of perfect comp, this is a great diagram to use. It represents the problem that exists or the problem that you're trying to rectify. So I've put here in red the basic bad points for monopoly and the basic good points for monopoly. I've also put some evaluation points in blue as well. If you're talking about perfect comp, essentially it's just the opposite of these things. So let's just go through. Why is monopoly bad? Well, the prices are increased and quantities are reduced compared to perfect competition. The diagram says that very nicely. Um, choice is restricted because quantity isn't as great as people would like. Consumers are demanding resources at QC. That's where allocative efficiency occurs. But resources are not provided at that level. So choice is restricted in the market. And we've said that because prices are increased, there's exploitation, there's a deadweight loss to consumers. We know there's productive and allocative efficiency. Well, that's not good. Okay, there's inefficiency there. And uh, the monopolist also may suffer from diseconomies of scale, depending on where it's producing on the average cost curve. Why is it good? Well, there might be economies of scale benefits. Okay, so obviously we wouldn't talk about both, one or the other. So potentially economies of scale benefits, which might lead to lower prices, in fact, than a perfectly competitive firm. With more firms in the, um, in the industry, there are less chances for firms to exploit economies of scale because production just won't be great enough. There are too many firms around for you to increase your level of production by that much. Whereas for a monopoly, you've got a much greater chance to exploit all economies of scale. If you do so, it's good for you as a firm because your costs actually reduce, um, which means you can maximise your profits even more. And it's good for consumers because potentially it might lead to lower prices if these costs, lower costs are passed on. Uh, why else might a monopoly be good? Well, if they're operating in a contestable market, it could be actually very good for the consumers. It might mean there are lower prices and greater quantities. Okay, Price and quantities closer to the competitive levels. If you want more understanding of contestable markets, look at my video on that to understand it. And there might be some dynamic efficiency gains too, one of the big arguments as to why monopoly is quite good. But what does the final effect depend on, whether the monopoly is good or bad? Depends on the level of contestability, so just how contestable is the market, how great are the entry barriers. Depends on the level of regulation, obviously the more regulation potentially the, the less uh, we suffer as a, result, as a result of these bad points. Depends on the objective of the, of the monopolist. We learned in a previous video that firms may have lots of different objectives. Not all firms want to profit maximise. So let's say this monopolist didn't profit maximise, let's say it went for a more socially responsible objective, then maybe we don't need to worry about these bad points so much. At the same time, it depends on the current level of production with respect to economies of scale benefits or diseconomies of scale uh, costs. Okay, so that's the basic um, structure for this type of question. A nice question to get as long as you follow this basic pro forma. See you next time. Thank you very much.